Today we're going to be constructing the Ascot Inn and adding another layer to the lore of the place. The inn would be a very important part of Ascot, being a great source of revenue and employment for the town. To develop an interesting dynamic to Ascot's story, I've decided to have the inn owned by the farmer's sister. Their father owned both businesses before passing away and in an unusual move decided to split the inheritance between his two children instead of leaving it all to his elder son, the farmer, which would have been the more traditional thing to have done. Years later, the farmer is still jaded by this decision and his relationship with his sister, the innkeeper, can be described as tense. It doesn't help that their political and religious ideals are also vastly different. The farmer being incredibly devout and conservative, whereas the innkeeper is far more liberal in her ideals. When their father passed, the innkeeper decided to pay homage to him with a name change for the inn. Before his passing, he had always wanted to travel to the northern countries, so the innkeeper spent a huge amount of money bringing a pine sapling down from the destination her father never made it to. She planted it on his ashes next to what is now called the Lone Pine Inn. She also continued her father's ideal for the tavern maintaining rooms for people of lower class as they travel to and from Castellum trying to seek their fortune. Yet another decision that was against her brother's wishes. The inn's well known for its hardy and affordable food and the iconic Lone Pine Tree growing next to it. Many of the travellers that visit the inn will barter trade for food and lodging and there is always someone on the small stage singing for their supper. The extra comfort of the upper market rooms on the second floor can be enjoyed by spending a few more silver and for a few silver more you can buy yourself some company to come with the room. Even though most travellers between the two cities of Soror and Castellum tend to be quite poor, there is a small stables located to the rear of the inn for people who are lucky enough to be travelling with a horse. The people that stop by the Lone Pine Inn would be a diverse group and it is often our interaction with people from different cultures and beliefs that we get a greater understanding and empathy for each other. The innkeeper's exposure to this diversity of people is what has led to her divergence from the pious belief system of her brother and created another point of contention with their relationship as she has a greater understanding of the human element. But it is also the reason for the tavern's success. The Lone Pine Inn stands as ever before a beacon for the town of Ascot where everyone is welcome. In building the tavern, I have tried to be both in keeping with the build style that is used locally but still make it stand out as it is a showpiece of the town and a place that the residents of Ascot would feel quite proud of. We have gone for the red timber as with all the copper weed that is readily available, a red dye or stain for the wood would be easily obtainable. With a combination of the rose plaster foundation, and the salt of the earth interiors, we have been able to create a point of interest in Ascot. The story element of the lone pine tree also helps make the space more unique without losing how the build feels within the rest of the town. All right, before we get into the walk and talk part of the video, I just wanna say a massive thank you to Alicia B and Soul Tundra who in the Horse and Around episode 4 suggested some names for this horse. I couldn't separate them to be honest so I've decided to use all three. This is Alicia B's suggestion of Lady Marmalade, the horse here in the training grounds and over here we have Epona and Artemis suggested by Soul Tundra. So thank you very much guys for those suggestions. As we approach the tavern here we can see the nice bright red colour in the timber. I thought it would be good to use something that makes the tavern stand out but also use a build style that fits in with the rest of the town. Uh, towns tended to use the same sort of building mechanics because of the materials that they had around them. 
So it makes sense that they would use similar similar styles to the houses that are built in the area. The bright red timber that's on the second floor of the property would have been made possible by all the copper weed that's around the place. They'd very much be able to make a nice red sort of stain for that timber. Around the back we've got a stables area for those lucky enough to be travelling with a horse, a little section for them to keep their horses in. This area of course if they're wealthy enough they could always buy a horse from the stables. But as we go in here we can see the very much down to earth tavern that we have. We've got the stage here where people might decide to sing for their supper, show their talents and potentially reduce their cost of their stay within the Lone Pine Inn for the evening. But we've got some pretty basic sort of tavern styling in here. Some very, very low level sort of pubs. There's not a lot of decoration. It's a building that serves a purpose. Now if we go into the kitchen area here, we can see that this is a very, very busy kitchen. They serve a lot of people here. We've got the little window in there where they put their full plates up and they're able to pick up those orders as they start flying out their window. Very, very busy and cluttered kitchen. It would be chaotic to work in here with the amount of people that they feed within this tavern and the amount of people that are staying in the inn above. As we come up these stairs to the second floor, this is the wealthier sort of spot. Like so, if you've got a little bit of extra silver to spend, you might be able to stay in one of these fancier rooms. Here we've got the amazing bed system that's within Victory Mod. And if we go into the next room, you can see these aren't single blocks. These are variable blocks. You can literally make custom beds with Victory Mod, which is a pretty cool element that we've added. As we go across the hallway here, we've got a bit of more of a lower class area where people would be able to stay. They do have the benefit of a lockbox to keep their belongings in though. As we head up these stairs, we do have the poorer area here where people would be staying. This is where a lot of people would stay that are traveling between the two cities, the people that are a little bit down on their luck. You can see they've got like plates of food and things around the place. It's a bit of a messy sort of area. Over here we've got a group of people playing a game called Can of Star, which is, which is a prevalent card game within the world of Kaelum. They're up here, they're trying to win a bottle of alcohol. They've run out of money to be able to spend it downstairs, so they're up here trying to gamble against each other to see if they can get a little bit more grog. We've got some sneaky little rats in the space as well. Overall this is where the more poor people might live. We can see we've got the support blocks on the roof here. This is a block that I've created within Victory Mod as well. It's a block that used to exist in 112. I've recreated it. It's a different block model and texture, obviously. I really missed that block, so it was very, very important that I brought that back. And it's directional like stairs as well, so which is an added little bonus for that feature. Okay, so that's the end of episode six. I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that is supporting this series so far. If you've made it this far, I'd love for you to drop a like on the video. Thank you very much for the support and we'll see you guys back for building Ascot in episode 7.